After having tried to film this six times, I'm getting a feeling that I should put it off to another day. Since you know, I still have five days left in the month and I'm filming it today. I think it'd be okay to put it off a few days, but I'm determined to film it today and get it right. Gosh dang it. Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, hi, welcome back. My name's Maddie, and I do bi-monthly wrap-ups. My name is not Maddie, that's a nickname. I don't know why I felt so prevalent to tell you that, but it's a nickname. Uh, anyway, I am back with another bi-monthly wrap-up. I do these every two months because I don't read enough books in a month to do a monthly wrap-up. But apparently this year I actually have been. I've been reading quite a few books a month, and I'm very proud of myself. But yes, I'm filming this five days before August is over because I don't have plans to finish any more books. I'm going to start one, but I don't plan on finishing it by the end of the month. But if I do somehow finish another book by the end of the month, it'll be included at the end of this. But yeah, today I have ten books to talk to you guys about. Most of them I gave it three out of five stars, but I got one that I'm super excited to talk to you guys about because I gave it five out of five, and it is definitely going to be on one of the best books I've read this, on my best books of 2020 list. So yes, super excited to talk to it, talk to you guys about it, but let me calm down because I'm already getting so hyped up. And let's talk about the first book I finished in July. So the first book I ended up finishing was actually the seventh book in the Keeper of the Lost City series, which is Flashback by Shannon Messenger. I gave this a 5 out of 5 star rating, and I think my granny gave it a 4.5 out of 5. Her actual rating will be right here on the screen. But I really, really loved this book. This is the seventh book, like I said, and if you don't know what this series is about, the first book follows a young girl named Sophie who has been able to hear the thoughts of humans since she was five years old. While on a school, on a class trip with her class to a museum, she runs into a boy named Fitz and finds out that uh, she's not the only one who can hear thoughts. Fitz ends up whisking her off to the elven world and so he finds out that she is an elf. And in fact, not only is she an elf, but she also has secrets hidden deep inside her mind that people are willing to kill for. Not only does the series have kind of a darker undertone for a middle grade series, but it also has fantastic characters, amazing relationships, and the further along you get into the series, the more adultish and the more grown these books get. And I absolutely adore this series and I really ended up liking this book. And the main reason I like this book so much is because the first book, this book, for the first time in a long time, has action at the beginning of it. What? I know! What the heck? Action at the beginning of a chunky book? What? Who knew? I didn't know. But this actually has some of that, but then the rest of most of the rest of the book is just filled with recovering uh but i still really liked it and yeah that's really all i have to say there was some stuff in this book that i didn't really like but it's kind of a little bit spoilerish i did not like what happened between fitz and sophie at the in at, near the end of this book but we all knew it was gonna happen for reasons that I don't want to say, because I don't want to spoil it. It's not really a spoiler, it's not that big of a spoiler, it's not like, you know, yeah, but anyway. Um, and then I didn't really like this cover scene, because this, all the covers are based off a scene in the book, and most of the time they're based off, like, the big, like, climax of the book, and this really wasn't. It wasn't. And this was actually a really lame scene, in my opinion, so, yeah. But again, I got 5 out of 5 stars for me, maybe just because I was so excited to have something happen at the beginning. I don't really know, but I loved it, so moving on. So after I finished uh, Flashback, I ended up reading Goldie Vance Volume 4 by Hope Larson. I gave this 3 out of 5 stars. This volume brings in a lot of characters from the first three volumes, but I don't remember any characters from the first three volumes except the main ones. And so when you bring them back in to a story and I don't remember them, I don't remember, I don't like the story because I don't know any of the characters. They kept like throwing one-liners in with the characters' names from the first three volumes and I'm like, I know I'm supposed to know them, 
but I literally don't remember anything from those. Like right now, I can't tell you what volume four is about. I'm really having trouble remembering it. Uh, and I read it a month ago, so yikes. But I can tell you the basic premise of this. This is about a young girl named, she's not that young, I think she's like 20 years old. Her name is Goldie Vance and she solves mysteries. Uh, very easy to solve mysteries because again it's a graphic novel so they're very very short. But yeah, she solves mysteries at her father's hotel that she owns and it's cute. So, moving on. If Volume 5 does come out, then I will probably read it, but I get these from the library, so whenever the, my library gets it, then I'll read it, but if they never get it, and it never comes out, that's perfectly fine. I remember it ended on a cliffhanger, but I don't remember what the cliffhanger was, so... The next book I ended up reading was another book that my granny and I read together, and that was The Magic Misfits by Neil Patrick Harris. I gave this 3 out of 5 stars, and my granny gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. This is a super fun middle grade, but it is very young. It reads a lot younger than the other middle grades my granny and I have read, which is one reason why my granny gave it 4 out of 5. She just felt like she couldn't read it because it's a really young middle grade. Uh, but I don't really know how to describe this book because it's very short, so I'll read the little description of it. So... When street magician Carter runs away, he never expects to find friends and magic in a sleepy New England town. But like any good trick, things change in instantly as greedy B.B. Bozo and his crew of crooked carnies arrive to steal anything and everything they can get their st sticky fingers on. After a faithful encounter with the local purveyor of, illustration, of Ill illusion, Dante Vernon, Carter teams up with five other like-minded illusionists. Together, they both, t together, using teamwork and magic, they set out to save the town of Mineral Wells from Bozo's villainous cl cl clutches. These six magic misfits will soon discover eventual friendship and their own self-worth in this delightful new series. Why did I struggle so much with that last paragraph? I don't know. But it's a cute middle grade, but it is very young and... If you, if it sounds interesting, feel free to pick it up. It's like I said, it's a quick read. There is some like magic tricks. It teaches you some magic tricks, but um, yes. After reading The Magic Misfits, I ended up finishing Death Note by a name I'm not even gonna try to pronounce because I know I'm not gonna pronounce it correctly. This is a the first manga I've ever read and I gave it three out of five stars. I really thought I was going to like this. I thought I was going to give us five out of five stars. I thought this was going to be the first ever manga slash graphic novel slash comic, like anything out of that genre that I bought because I don't buy those things. Well, don't worry. I'm not going to step over that line yet because I gave it 3 out of 5 stars and I was just disappointed. Everybody loves this. Like, everybody, like my friends who like anime, they are like, oh my gosh, you're going to love this. It's fantastic. And I didn't like it. It was okay. Um, but, mm -mm. This is about a boy named Light who ends up finding the Death Note, which is something that the god or gods of death uh, use, I think, and then Light uses it to rid the world bad. But to do that, he's going to have to turn to somebody that he is trying to rid the world of. That's like the last line of this. Well... With Elle hot on his heels, who's a detective trying to fight the fine light, will Light lose sight of his noble goal or his life? So, yeah. It was okay. I've heard my, my friend who thought I was going to love this was like, the TV show's pretty good, but I'm not really into t anime. I don't know. I've actually never watched an anime, so I guess I can't say I'm not into it, but anyway, anyway. Let's continue on. The next book I ended up finishing was The Last Wish by Andrzej Sapkowski. I gave this 3 out of 5 stars and my enjoyment for this book was really low. But that's completely my fault because I watched the TV show before reading the series. And pretty much every story in this book takes place in the TV show. So if you've seen the TV show, 
I wouldn't recommend reading this unless you really want to. The only thing I would recommend in here is one story that's called A Grain of Truth because that story is not in the TV show and it's fantastic. I really, really loved reading that story. It was just so pretty and beautiful and it wasn't really pretty. It's it's a, it's a fantasy book, but I really liked that story. I really liked like, all the characters and stuff like that, so yeah, but... I think if I had read this before I watched the TV show, I would have enjoyed it a lot more. And maybe I wouldn't be holding off to continue on the series so much. But, yes. Three out of five. It was good. I liked it. I will be reading the rest of the series. But, pretty much just the TV show. Another low rating. My, the next book my granny and I ended up reading was The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. Uh, we both gave this 2 out of 5 stars. Now, if you like pretty lyrical re writing, you might enjoy this a bit more than I did. But, if you like a story where stuff happens, you're probably not going to like this book, okay? Because nothing really happened in this book until the end. And it says there's, it says, um... Uh, Meanwhile, a young man is determined to free his people by killing the witch. That man doesn't kill the witch. He doesn't try to kill the witch till pretty much this part of the book. And by then, you, you know, I, don't, I didn't care, okay? I was like, yes, this man's going to kill the witch. We're going to get some, like, action happening. But, um... He didn't try to... He didn't even want to kill the witch until past halfway so that's a little far by the way uh but yeah this is about a young girl named no this is about a town okay this is about a town um who have to give up the youngest child one child one time a year to the witch who lives in the woods and because the town people think that the witch is a bad 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 woman and that this witch eats their babies but realistically the witch doesn't eat their babies and just brings them to the opposite side of the of uh, the woods and one time this witch gets a baby girl named Luna ha 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 um, and she ends up giving this girl magic from the moon instead of the starlight I don't know like I said it's got very pretty when it's like the lyrical writing's very pretty but I really don't care about anything that happened in this book. Really disappointed. I thought I was going to like love this book and I was going to want to read every other Kelly Barnhill book that she's ever written. And that's not what happened. So, yes. I also realized I didn't tell you what The Witcher is about. So, I'm sorry. But watch the Netflix trailer if you want to know what it's about. Because that's better than me trying to explain it. Because I can never explain that series. So, I'm not going to try it. Alright, so we have reached the end of July, and the first book that my granny and I ended up reading in August was the eighth book in the Keeper of the Lost City series, Legacy by Shannon Messenger. Now, originally, my granny and I were going to be waiting until this book came out in paperback, like October 13th, so it would match the books on the shelves, but then... It was $11 on Amazon when it was $15 originally. And my mom was like, just get it, okay? Just get it. And we're like, I'm like, woo! And then I ended up surprising my granny because I didn't tell her this was coming in the mail. And so, yes, we read this. I gave it a 4 out of 5, and my granny gave it... a 3.5. I gave it a higher rating, and that's because... So much Keefy! There is so many So Keefy scenes in this book. So if you're a fan of So Keefy, yeah, read this book. If you're not a fan of So Keefy, I don't think you're going to like this book as much unless you like long, drawn-out plots because that's literally this book. Um, so, yeah, but... Like I said, I've already explained what the first, I've already explained what the first book's about, so I'm not going to re-explain it. But I, this, everything in this book took twice as long than it needed to. Like, something that we've been waiting for since, like, at least the last book, uh, we get one of Sophie's memories back in this book. And we're waiting for that pretty much, like, the entire series or something like that. And so we finally get that in this book. But it's 
five pages of Sophie arguing with another character because Sophie doesn't want the other character to know that memory. And I'm just like, I don't care, okay? Five pages of nonsense because they argue and then they bring back a memory from when Sophie was a child. Oh, so cute. But then they argue again and I'm like, just knock them out, okay? Hit them with this book because it's way too long. I'm sorry. <laughs> this book makes me mad because everything took too long to happen. But I gave it four out of five just because there was so much Keithy in it and I love Keithy and that's the only reason why. I book, I dog-eared every time Keithy came on page and every time he had cute Keithy scenes and Keithy with the elf cookies. and I love him to death. But yes, this cover scene as well, another letdown. Another letdown, okay? Second lamest cover scene ever. But this is a pretty, this is a pretty cover, except it's the lamest, it's the second lamest cover scene and I'm disappointed. The next book that I ended up finishing is another book that my granny and I wrote together, and that is Everland by Wendy Spinelli. This is the first book in the Everland trilogy, and I gave this 4 out of 5, and so, that, so did my granny. We both gave this a 4 out of 5 star rating. I was pleasantly surprised. I did not think I was going to like this book as much as I did. Granted, the insta-love in this first book shoot me because it is so bad they know each other for two days and then by the end of it they're like i love you pete i love you too gwen promise me you'll never leave me and she's like i'll never leave you sure you won't um but yeah i gave it four out of five like i said i was pleasantly surprised this is a retelling of peter pan pete his last name's pan pete pan that does not sound good, okay? Peter Pan sounds okay. Pete Pan, uh-uh, mm-mm-mm, but I get it, but no. Uh, but this follows a young girl named Gwen. She's not young, she's like 16 years old, and London has been destroyed by a virus. And because of this, all of the adults have died, and so Gwen and her two siblings, Joanna and Mikey, are now um, fending for themselves. But when Gwen comes back from Scout, 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 from hunting for cans and stuff like that. She's not actually hunting animals, but I can't say the other word. Uh, uh, when she comes back, she finds out that Joanna has been taken by the Marauders or Hook's men. And so then she's out to try and save Joanna and keep her family close to her. And then Pete and Bella come into play and she meets the last boys and then they take the fight to Hook. And I actually really pleasantly enjoyed this book. And yeah, besides the Insta Love, it was pretty entertaining and enjoyable. And that's that. So the next book I ended up finishing, I actually was reading it the entire, since the beginning of August. This was not on my August TBR. Um, but in my defense, when a book you've owned for over two years is finally saying, hey, I know you want to read me, you pick it up, okay? And that's what I did. I read A Dark State of Magic by V.E. Schwab, and I was enjoying this until the end, when I just wanted it to end, and I gave this a 3 out of 5 star as well. How many books have I given 3 out of 5 stars this month? I might as well just count at the end of this. Uh, but yes, this is about a world where there are four Londons. Now, if it's like a multiverse like DC, I don't know. But there's four different types of Londons. There's Red London, which is flourishing with beautiful magic. There's Grey London, which has no traces of magic, except there's magic everywhere. So, of course, there's a little bit of magic. Then there's Black London, where nobody can, they don't talk about it anymore because it was completely eaten over by magic. And then there's White London, which is uh, fastly approaching Black London's standards because White London is ruled by evil magic. Well, it's not evil, but it's ruled by evil people with magic. So, yes. And this follows a man named Kel who uh, smuggles. He smuggles things from other Londons to Grey London to like get stuff and be paid, kind of like that. You know what a smuggler does. And he ends up uh, deciding he would like to uh, 
go to Black London. Not Black London. What the heck am I talking about? He doesn't want to go there, but this person runs up to them and him and says, hey, can you bring this to my brother? And he ends up getting a piece of Black London, which is illegal, and then he has to go and run for his life, and he runs into a pirate type of woman named Delilah Bard, and then they are love interests, but there's no ends of love in this book, thank gosh, because I do not like ends of love. I thought I thought I liked romance, and I've re I've realized that I do not like ends of love. Okay, give me enemies to lovers. Give me friends to lovers. Do not give me ends of love. It makes no freaking sense. Okay. Anyway, three out of five stars. I like like I said, I was enjoying this pretty much up to here, but I hit page two hundred, and I was like. I have 195 pages left. When is it ever going to end? So yes, three out of five stars. I did not enjoy this as much as I wanted to and I'm disappointed. The next book I ended up reading is my favorite read of both these months and that is Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World by Ashley Herring Blake. This was on my August TBR. So be proud of me because I finally read something that I was supposed to. I don't do that very often. And I love this book. Oh my god, this book is fantastic. I gave it five out of five stars. It is just gorgeous and beautiful. And I love everything about this. So I originally got this for Detectivathon, which was supposed to go on in June, I think. But it was canceled. And I I think and then it got pushed back to July, and then I think it, I think it got canceled. I think it's I don't think it ever happened. If it did, I missed out. But this was supposed to be the group book, and I was like, okay, this doesn't sound usually what I would read, but I want to be able to participate with the live show. Well. Even if this did happen in July, I didn't read until August, so I wouldn't have been able to participate in the live show. And I picked it up because I thought one of the main reasons I didn't like A Darker Shade of Magic was because I was tired of fantasy books. And if that's true, then it makes sense, because I really am not interested in reading up, picking up any fantasy books right now. So, you know. But I, I picked this up, and I sat down on my floor, and I started it. And then I didn't put it down. And then I didn't put it down. And then before I knew it, it was 10.30 and I was done with it. I did put it down to eat dinner and hang out with my mom, you know, things like that. But I read it from like 2 to 10.30 at night. And if you take out like the three hours I spent with my mom, because we played a board game, then, um... I read this pretty I read this pretty quick, okay? This is a adorable story and it follows a young girl named Ivy whose house at the beginning of this book gets torn up by a tornado. So her entire family of five is displaced and uh, she has to deal with that because she is the middle child and she feels like she's being left out and stuff like that and it's so sweet. It's so sweet. I love this book. Uh, not the fact that she's being left out, that's not sweet, but like the ending of how all of it's concluded is super sweet. But uh, because of the fact that her tornado, the tornado ripped through her home, she has to go and stay at the school's gym for a night until her family can find somewhere to stay. And while she's at the gym, her journal where she draws photos of young girls holding hands gets taken. And then the next day back to school, the photos from her journal with little notes start showing up in her locker. And this story is so cute! I love, love, love this. Um, my thing's gonna die. It's got, th it's 39 and it's like 30 minutes, so hold on. Yeah, I'm gonna hate editing this, uh, but this is such a cute story and I loved every single second of it. And yes, I want to read Ashley Herring Blake's other middle grade, The Heart of Sunny St. James. Uh, super cute title, by the way, and I really want to read that because I love this so much. But I just, guys, the characters, the world, it's just a normal world. But like the characters and Ivy is such a fantastic main character because you can't help but root for Ivy. And I cried multiple times, but then the main thing I cried at when was everything was revealed. I was just, a, I was just, I was just a tear. I was just a puddle. I was just a puddle. 
Oh my god. I love this book. Like I said, I knew I was going to talk about this for a long time because this is my favorite book I've read these past two months and I love it. Um, you have to read it, okay? Even if you don't like contemporaries. Like, I don't like contemporaries, but I freaking love this book, okay? Give it a good try, you know? Read 50 pages of it. And then trust me, you won't put it down because that's what happened to me. I couldn't put it down. And then the final book I ended up finishing, I actually haven't finished yet. I'm finishing it tomorrow, but I'm pretty, pretty, I'm pretty sure I'm going to give, give it this rating. And if I actually give it a different rating, then I'll put it on the screen. Uh, but that is Umberland by Wendy Spinelli. This is the sequel to Everland, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to give it two out of five. But I have a feeling that my granny is going to give it a higher rating. So here's our official ratings. Mine are my granny's, in case you were curious. But yes, I'm going to give this a 2 out of 5 star, I think, because I am not enjoying this at all. I really liked the first book, and I was really, really surprised. So I expected to like this book a lot more than I am, and that I did, because I I'm, I'm literally got like 80 pages left, and I'm not liking it at all. So... Yes, I already told you what the first book is about, and this takes place about two months afterwards. And now, they're all turning into lizards, basically. So, yes. And I I don't like this book. I really just, I'm not connecting with any of the things. I didn't like Gwen or Pete from the first book. And in this book, we, got, we get to read from Pete's point of view. And I'm not enjoying that at all. I really just skipped his point of views. And I also don't really care for the relationship between Alyssa and Maddox because those are our characters who the main characters of this book and I just really am not a fan of it um I do like Alyssa and Maddox better than I like Gwen and Pete but I still ain't a fan of them because the first like 50 pages of this book Gwen, Alyssa's like I don't like Maddox he is a bad man he runs the poison garden I hate him I despise his guts and then she sees him and he's like, she's like, oh my gosh, he's so hot. Look at him. He's got muscles. He's got a gold twinkle in his eye. Oh my, my. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, stop it, okay? I don't need any insta love. <sighs> and in, my, in their defense, this isn't as quick of a love as Gwen and Pete, but it's still pretty insta lovey. And um, then... On page 215, a character, a character passes away. And I was saying, you could kill anybody in this book, except for one of these three characters. And you kill one of these three characters! No! I was so upset. I was reading this last night, and I'm just like reading it, and I'm like, don't you do it, Wendy. Don't you do it. And then she did it, and I threw the book over my shoulder. I was like, ah, I'm done. I threw it over my shoulder, and I went and got ready for bed. I was like, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. But I already went with my granny, so I can't be done. But it's going to get two out of five stars for me. I'm really not liking it. I'm obviously going to be reading the third book, and I hope I'm going to like it more. But that's just because my granny is actually really enjoying this series, and I'm glad because I hate this book, and I am very disappointed because I love, I really like the first one, but I do not like the second one, and that's the end of that. All right, everybody, that will be the end of this uh, July and August wrap-up. Look at that beautiful stack. This is probably the biggest stack because, well, look how big the top book is. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm sorry if I uh, rambled a little too much. I have a lot of energy for some reason right now. I can't tell you why because I'm really sweating. And if you also saw any uh, sweat stains in my armpits, again, I apologize. But I'm really sweating right now because it's very hot in my room. So, hmm. But, yes, like I said, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have any other video suggestions you would like to see, tell me in the comment section. I'm always looking for more video suggestions and ideas. And I'll see you guys all next Monday for another video. And, um, like, subscribe, do all those fun, lovely things. And in case you guys didn't know, I post videos every single Monday. So I'll see you guys all next Monday for another video. And, hey, don't forget, I'm still a freaking bulldozer. Bye, guys.